my graduates from my school being Forbes. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs> a mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop. Yo, big homie, I want to ask you one question before y'all get started. Yeah. The biggest, you didn't see a level of success that I can only dream of. Empower people that I can only dream of. This starts from somebody like you. This is what you inspire for me to go out and empower my community. In one definition, for, for, from the boss's standpoint, what recession proof mean to you and your words from what you've seen and experienced in the game? Mm, recession proof to me. That defines success. Whatever you do, it means you're successful. And I want to keep it as simple as possible. Success begins with self. That begins with yourself. You got to be a man of your word. Because the motherfucker that's your right hand man right now, that you losing with, may come work with Rosé and I may get money with him. So we can't be those type of entrepreneurs or bosses that's going to continue running through different individuals. We got to build. They got to trust us. You understand? I'm going to invest in my team. I want it to be cool for us to work hard. Fuck that. On our off day, let's get fly and go have a meeting, nigga. <laughs> Talk heavy. Man, let's enjoy this today. We hustling, but we gonna enjoy this today. Recession proof, y'all. Let's get to it. Let's do it. Yeah! Ernest, what's going on? You see what color I'm rocking, right? That's that recession proof blue. That's right. Shout out to our brother Marcus Barney and the entire recession proof family. Now, I'm sure you saw Instagram. I'm sure you saw all social media posts in that conference. Check this out. They had Wall Street Trapper. They had million dollars worth of game for you, Mayweather, Ricky Rose, and of course, Earn Your Leisure in attendance. Now, if you don't want to miss the next one and all the game that's being given out in the recession proof family, head over to rpxeyl.com. That's right, rpxeyl.com to join the recession proof family at the lowest price anywhere. That's right, anywhere. rpxeyl.com right now. Don't wait, don't hesitate. Tell them Earn Your Leisure sent you. First and foremost, first and foremost, man. I gotta say this off the rip. I fuck with Rick Ross because he teaching wealth. <laughs> <laughs> That's off the rip, man. R.I.P. to Nipsey. R.I.P. to DMX. R.I.P. Sure. to Kobe. Definitely gotta pay, pay, pay our respects before all our fallen soldiers. So, Rose, I wanna get right into this, man. You need no introduction. What you've been able to accomplish, phenomenal. As far as, you know, starting from the rap game and transitioning to being on a Magic Johnson level. That's how I really look at you. The promise, more so, <laughs> more so than the entertainment. I appreciate it, man. Nah, nah, I appreciate you, bro. So um, I want to start at the beginning. I want to start at the beginning. Because um, shout out to our boy Jim Jones. We interviewed Jimmy, and he said he was an A&R at Warner. And um, he said he was spent a lot of time in Miami. And he told Kevin Lyles, he's like, yo, this is kid Rick Ross out there. He got a single that's burning up the streets. And Kevin did some research, and um, Jimmy was like, well, he won a million dollars to sign him. Kevin was like, I ain't giving him a million. He said, you need to. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, you need to. Uh, so how did that start as far as building that momentum, 745, white on white, building it in the streets, and then coming in the game with, if I'm not mistaken, a million dollar bidding war, just off the rip? That was just me, uh, you know, putting that groundwork in as an underground artist, you know, writing for others. Uh, and it took me time to get on. But I also, that time that it took me to get on, I also understood my value. And I knew what that patience of me having was going to be worth. And that's what it was. Um, all the time that I was dropping mixtapes back to back to back, shit was really preparing me. So once I got that one smash record, every damn hustling, that changed the fucking forecast for Rose. And I told him right off the rip, before I fly anywhere to talk to somebody, it's gotta be seven figures on the table, straight up. Bottom line. Yeah, it's Good. crazy you say patience because I just left Rap Snacks office. And I was with my guy James and Wise, 
And yeah. J- James Shout was talking about you. He was like, Family. he's extremely patient. He said that. He was like, Rose has extreme patience. Talk about that as far as, because from my understanding, you was rapping for 10 years before you actually right. made any money. Right. I was, I was writing there. I was writing for others and rapping for myself longer than a decade before I ever made a coin. So I understand that. We done all went years without having shit, so we understand what patience is, because believe it or not, that counts as your patience towards whatever you're working for right now. And so that's exactly what I did. Yeah. Fuck it, I'm gonna be patient. And um, once we got in a position of power, my negotiation was a little different. It was a little different. I understood my, my heights, I understood my lows, I understood what I had to work on. And I, um, I brought it to the table, and I sat down, and shit, here we are, still winning. Yeah, one, one of the, the, the illest things I heard you say was, before you can be a CEO, you have to be a worker. Yeah. You have to be a worker, and, and that says a lot, because the grind you're talking about, the 10 years, nobody ever sees that. But where, where did you get that mindset from? And was that in the early ages of, of your development, or did that come with music? I believe that really came up growing up right here in Miami. You understand, as a youngster, before they let you, you know, do an oil change, you got to wash the car first. Before they let you work on the ceiling, you got to cut the grass first. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And shit, I began hands-on, still hands-on. I still cut my own grass right now till this day. If I got oh, time, I'm going to do it. Wait, wait, time out, time out. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Now, I saw the John Deere, all right? Right, right. And, and when we talking, we're not talking about the everyday lawn. We, we talking about the biggest estate in the state of Georgia. In the East Coast. In the East Coast? Don't ever play yourself. <laughs> Facts. Discounted. <laughs> I discounted it, right? Wait, so you out on the John Deere cutting all that lawn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, me and four or five of my homies. That sounds more like it. Yeah, yeah, I got a, I got a couple of homies. Shout out to Kano and the whole squad. But we get out there. We smoke us one, and we all get on our own tractors and go about our day. But the beautiful thing about it is the time that I get to sit by myself, reflect by myself. I think about my plans. I plot, strategize, and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? And shit, by the time I I end that for the day, I'm ready to make some business calls, step our game up some kind of way. So you said, I started at the car wash. You was actually washing cars. Without a doubt. (laughs) How did that... Does that still keep you grounded, remembering humble beginnings? Right, He right. said even once had a job point tall on the roof. roof. Yeah, 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 without a doubt. <laughs> that, that, and that, I shovel shit. Yeah, yeah, and, that's, <laughs> and that was all facts. And still to this day, that still make me the hustler that I am, regardless of um, the position we in, because I'm much further than I could have ever fathomed. And I think that was the word to use for that. You know what I'm saying? Fathom. <laughs> yeah. But on some, on some real shit, I'm much further than I could have ever imagined. You understand? And I'm still getting up every day and going at it like we ain't got shit. Because to me, that's what represents a true hustler. Yeah. Your, your mindset has always been different. I mean, from the early stage. I, I remember, I think it was on the Deeper Than Rap album, you said, uh, I won't fail, but a lot of men will. I was like, ooh, that's a bar. It's, you know you're in a surrounding that isn't promising, but you know that I'm going to make it out. And then later in your career, you, 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 you said, um, in a room full of failures, I feel out of place. Right. So you had that premonition for a while. How, how, did, it, how did it develop like that? Man, it's just what you got to do as being a boss, being a CEO, and I want to make this note, Your life is the most important position you'll ever have as a CEO. You the CEO of your life. You understand? And so for me, I always understood at an early age, I wasn't the smartest at the room. When the teachers asked a question, I would have loved to have been the young brother that had every answer. And I would have gave it to him, but I didn't. You understand? So I had to sit in the back, crack jokes, and do everything else. But I understood what I did have was passion. And that's what separated me from everybody else. When I played football, my passion, I wanted to practice to a day. When when all my other homies was, man, I'm tired. I'm ready to go home and watch cartoons. (laughs) Fuck cartoons, man. (laughs) Let's do this shit again. And that same passion still drives me to this day. Mm. You understand? It's Sunday. Let's still turn up. After this, we doing some more shit tonight. 
It ain't just about the money, it's about the brand. That's where patience come into play once again. The bill of brand, man, you gotta put 10 years on that shit. Of course you can make some money before then, whatever, whatever, but that's the kind of mind frame you gotta have when you're thinking about astronomical numbers. I think that was the word for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's two. Y'all keeping note? Let me, let that's me, two. Let me, ask, let me ask you this as far as, because we like to do like deep dives in the business and all of that. And um, you see over 1,100 people here that's interested in learning about business. Um, so I want to break down the businesses. First, I want to start with music. So you come in and you was hot off the rip. You sold, 100, I think, 187,000 your first record. First week. Right. But the reason why... I bring that up is because it's not like I don't think your first record went gold or platinum, but you started a record label, Maybach Music, and everybody knows Meek Mill, Wale, that story. So, how did you have the leverage to create a label, even though, like, I guess you wasn't a commercial star yet at that time? What I did was I understood once again. I understand my strengths and I understand my weaknesses. That's just like if I'm sitting in the in this crowd today. I would try to make sure I connected with the most motherfuckers in the crowd, meaning exchange numbers, introduce myself, and do it in a boss manner. And that's what I did. As soon as I got in Def Jam business, as soon as I got into the office, I made sure I bonded with the motherfuckers that had strengths in the areas I was weak in. Oh, how we get to this? How we continue to own this? This is what we need, okay? This is what I want to do. Let's sit down and um, let's build something together. You understand? And that's how you begin to educate yourself. So what usually would have took another artist five years to learn on his own, you know, I put somebody right by my side and got the game from, and you know, 16 months later, I introduced Maybach Music. Yeah, so that's, that's interesting, because one of the things, I think people haven't given you credit for this, and I've heard you say it before, is that when you signed your deal, you didn't spend a dollar. You didn't buy jewelry. You didn't buy a car. Well, the no. 745, I'm sure, came yeah, before that. Yeah, that's before rap. No, that was before rap. <laughs> before rap. <laughs> that white on white 745, <laughs> that came before it. Um, you didn't buy jewelry, like I said. You said, I'm, I'm going to save until I know the next best move. And so when you signed, in your mind, you're thinking already, I'm going to create a label. Was that the next best move? That's what you were thinking of? I know most definitely that was, you know, in the forecast. Me being the CEO, you know, the time that I would put in the music, that was enough for me to share with possibly 10 different artists. Mm. The amount of beats that I listen to in one night, the average artist won't listen to in three months. You know what I'm saying? I could sit there for 12 hours and listen to instrumentals, listen to beats, and go back and forth. You know what I'm saying? So I knew I would be a huge assistance to the right artists, the, the, you know, the young dudes with the right passion. You know, and I was blessed to come across a young Wale, of, of course, a Meek Mill, and, you know, uh, I came across other artists as well, and, you know, something nobody ever taught me was that, you know, you may come across some motherfuckers with the talent, but they may not have the passion. Mm. So that's just like being a CEO. You got to make sure you bringing somebody to the table who got the passion. They got to want to win more than you. The coach can't want the player to win more than the player do. Shit ain't going to happen. And that was something nobody never taught me. That was something I had to learn on my own. So when you, when you step in Def Jam's building, are they gravitating towards you because they see the hunger? Is this like when you're meeting like the Leo's and the Kevin Lyles? they like, this guy's special. This is bigger than music? I believe they did. Shout out to L.A. Reid, Jay-Z. Right, right. Uh, DJ Khaled was my a at the time. Shout out to Evie. Everybody that I had around me, they saw how I was on go. You understand? Rose released uh, Port of Miami. Six months later, I was ready to put out another album. Push it to the it, limit. Yeah, yeah. It, it's <laughs> almost like the label couldn't keep up with me. By the time I put out Triller, I was ready for Deeper Than Rap. After Deeper Than Rap, I was ready to put out another mixtape because they couldn't keep up. We had that argument all the time. Rich Forever. Yeah. That was the mixtape I released. Which one's our favorite? We always had an argument. Like, who, who was our, my favorite is Teflon Don. He always says Deeper Than Rap. Deeper Than Rap. <laughs> that, that won't change it for us. Change the game a yeah, lot. Let me, let me ask you this. How do you... What's your process as far as finding, all right, Meek Mill is a global icon superstar right now, but did you know that off the rip? What made you want to invest in somebody like Meek, who's from Philly, and, you know, not somebody like homegrown Miami, whatever, like, was it his buzz already in the streets of Philly? Was it his energy? 
what did you see in him that you thought he was going to be a star? Well, really, with Meek, it wasn't his buzz. It was, you know, once I was introduced to him and I got in the studio with him, I understood his talent. Spending a week with him, I understood his story. I understood his heart. And, and of course, I felt it at that point. Let's go. Let's, let's do this. You know what I'm saying? I understood homie vision. And um, he took it to another level. Did you, did you foresee him being who he is now? I did. I made a record called Two Pockets Back uh, many yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and one time for the legend Tupac, in no way was I saying, you know, Meek yeah, would be yeah, another be Tupac. Up Tupac. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Absolutely. But I knew Meek, Meek had a story to tell the way Pac did. And I knew that was special. Let me ask you this. Um, I want to go on music a little bit more. You have a unique ear for beats. I remember Nas called you the Barry White of our generation. Like, <laughs> it's, it's a different vibe, like, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? Especially coming from the South. So we're from New York, and like the first Southern artist that I really got into his music was T.I. Because I could understand, I could relate to him. Like, he had a fade, he was, you could tell he was from the South, but he had a New York swag too. And I kind of feel like you were the same way. Like, coming from Miami, all we heard before that was Trick Daddy and like that kind of music, which was dope. Blue. But you came on some just Maybach music, some Versace linen shirt. Like, you came with the whole <laughs> swag. Like, you know what I'm Ferrari, saying? Ferrari flyboy. <laughs> yeah, like. For, for, Ferrari fat boy. Where, where, where'd, that, where'd that vibe come from, the beat? Hey, don't forget this. And we don't want to discount this. Because he left us. But he was part of the ball head and beard crew. And now he left us. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I ain't saying you don't was. Say I'm I saying I am. I and he six. was. This guy's crazy. Shout out to my brothers Wallow and Gilly. We still part of the team. <laughs> it's still beer gang for life. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> but um, as far as the, the, the flavor and the style, growing up in Miami, it, it's always been universal. You understand? Miami always been high fashion, big money. We always love the ballys as the youngsters. You know, youngsters, I saw the hustles with the sway ballys. Whatever it is, it was always the flies. It was always universal. So if you was in, from New York City flying Miami, it always fit. Wherever you was from, Atlanta, wherever it was from. So, you know, I just made sure I stuck to the script. You know what I'm saying? As far as the jewels, the way we roll, the way the hustlers got around. You know what I'm saying? I just stuck to the script. I got to give it to the ones before me. They always did it big. Big boys out here always did it big. So, you know, that was the only way Rose could do it is do it big. Let's, let's get into this conversation. What's going on, y'all? Gold Fuel has completely revolutionized the energy drink market. It's formulated with clean, natural ingredients, and it's the only energy drink to use cordyceps mushrooms. Cordyceps help your body use oxygen more efficiently and have been used in Chinese medicine for thousands of years. Not only that, it's been known to help boost the immune system and reduce inflammation. So if you're looking for an energy drink that matches your style and represents your hustle, drink Gold Fuel. It only makes sense. Click the link below and use our promo code EYL20 to get 20% off. From one goat to the next. Cheers, family. Jet Doc, right? Mm. So if anybody watches, we, we got the biggest stock show yeah, called. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shout out to Jet Doc. We got one time for Jet Doc. One time yes, for sir. Jet Doc. So we got a stock show called Market Monday. We talk about stocks and Teladoc. Yes, absolutely. So that whole industry of virtual medicine is going through the roof right now. Pill pack. Uh, Amazon's involved. They said Apple's actually about uh, yep, to get yep, into yep, yep, yep. So from my understanding, you put a million dollar investment in a Jet Doc. And anybody doesn't know who Jet Doc, Jet Doc is an online health company where you get virtual doctor visits and it's subscription based. So right. it's like um, 10 to $20 a month. And this is a whole big thing. Mm -hmm. And it's really big, especially for, for black men, because it's like a lot of people don't go to the doctors because they don't have health insurance. Right. You don't need health insurance for this. Right. You don't need health insurance. You, it's, it's a low amount. Right. As far as um, actually the access to see the doctor is virtual. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, right over the phone. And as far as the trust, but pretty private. You got Rosé. So <laughs> in Rosé, we trust. In yeah, Rosé, so we trust. <laughs> talk about, can you break that down a little bit as far as how you, why you wanted to get involved in And it's a black CEO, by the way, as well. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Tommy Duncan, black CEO. Real, real. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. He's real successful. Um, all of his prior, you know, ventures, huge success. But, you know, first and foremost, everybody know Rosé. No, I done been through my own health scares. Right. So with myself, it's all about, you know, doing as much as we can for ourselves, for our people and the ones around us. Okay, so Jet Doc presented itself, and for me, what really caught my eye was, for one, 
the amount of money you could save. There's so many people that can't afford health care. They can't afford going to the doctor. They can't afford, you know, f fulfilling these expensive uh, prescriptions. So Jet Doc, it cut all that, you know, more than half, man. You know, so if you're a CEO of a company, you could get your employees Jet Doc, you know, health care for less than 10 to $20 a month. Not $300, not $400, and that's why so many people of our color yeah. don't have health care. And a lot of times, by the time we go visit a doctor, it's much too late. Mm -hmm. We got to prepare for the worst, when a lot of times we just need to, you know, address it as early as possible, you understand? And, and let's live, let's enjoy life. Oh, so, so there's a common theme, right? You, you, you said your health concerns led you to invest in, in uh, JetDoc. Right. I want to talk about Wingstop, though, because I, I heard, you know, Wingstop and Checkers, everybody has known you. Lemon Pepper is your, is your wing of choice. Good, good choice by that. Yeah. <laughs> so there, there's a common theme where you invest in things that you consume. Can you talk about the importance of that? Of course. I could go straight to that. Well, for myself, if I love it, I want to do it. I want to do it, you know, based on my heart. You understand? I done said this before. I was offered a seven-figure advance for smoking cigarettes, doing cigarette ads. I don't smoke squares. I can't do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm flattered. I appreciate it. But I can't do that. So for me, the reason why I could become partners with the brands I become partners with is it's got to be something that I genuinely love. I got to genuinely fuck with it. I wanted Wingstop. Uh, I bought my first franchise. I knew nothing about the business. I knew nothing about becoming a franchisee. I knew nothing of none. I knew none of that. I just knew I wanted to pick a chick up that I like one day. <laughs> <laughs> Ask them more <all> music. <laughs> Yo, you like chicken wings? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, and, Wait, that's how you impress me. Yeah, and pull up in there, and you know, I wanted to sit down eating on the way out. You know what I'm saying? Mention to her, oh yeah, you know this is my shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's all I really wanted. You understand? So I got to salute Charlie Morrison, the CEO at Wingstop. He let me in. He let me buy one. The energy was dope. I love lemon pepper wings. I bought two. I bought three. I bought four. Shout out to my mom, my sister. I put all this burden on them. We got the 10. We got the 15. We got the 20. Keep Shout going. out to my mom and my sister. Man. <laughs> Keep going. We got the 25. Keep going. You know <laughs> Shout out to my mom and my sister. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they just support me. They won't tell me no. I put the burden on them. But what, what I'm telling you is this. I did it because I loved it and I learned it as I went. I learned as I went, you understand? And once again, I networked with people. I got exchanged phone numbers with other dudes out in Cali who had 20 restaurants, this and that. How you manage this? How you deal with this? How you keep up with the finances? How you do this? And I learned it as we went and we still here. When did, when did you get involved in, in Wingstop? Man, I'm not even sure. Like five years ago? No, nah, it was more than five years ago. Okay. Even better. It, it was more than five. It was much more than five years ago. We much uh, we over a decade in. Okay. We over a decade in. You you invest in um, stocks at all? I do. I do. I got a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to tell you this, right? My mama taught me. She said, Will. She called me my real name. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she said, Will. You can't let these people play with Boys your money. If you years. buy something, you got to be able to touch it. I said, what you mean, mama? It got to have an address or something. <laughs> I'll never forget that, you dig? And so what I did was, that's what I basically put my money in. You know what I'm saying? Real estate, franchising, shit that I could pull up and actually see standing on the corner, straight up and down. Uh, but in the last couple years, I got some people that I'm real cool with. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, made a few investments, Bitcoin, et cetera, et cetera, a few more things. And, you know, I can't let everybody have a, the whole party to themselves. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> Not, I slid a little something in that shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, the reason, the reason why I asked you that, because I was doing some research and uh, Wingstop stock was $25 five years ago. And it's 137 today. So that's a 448% increase. So, uh, 
<laughs> I, I would have to the say, biggest. I would have to think that um, Rose definitely helped boost the company's stock. Brought the stock up <laughs> for, for sure. We we'll say so. I would think. Yeah, you know what? Well, once we got we got in the franchise side, you know, we most definitely with wing stock, you know, invested on that side as well. You know what I mean? Um, what's what's the process of getting like the, the, the franchise? Is it like? I know with the McDonald's, it's like you got to pay like a million dollars just to get the thing, and then you got to go through the training and all that. Did you have to go through that too, or was you like since you Rick Ross, it's kind of like a little different as far as you getting the franchise? Well, I'm, I'm straight up. That's why I continue to, to give my sister and my mother they props. You know what I'm saying? They they went and got college degrees. They both, you know, uh, college educated. You know what I'm saying? And For sure. I make sure I stress this as much as possible. We got to start with the ones around us and the ones that love us most because a lot of times we could be looking for somebody to help us do something when the motherfucker you need is right next to you mm -hmm. and that's what I did you know what I mean and I'm blessed I trust my sister and my mom I tell them what the idea is I tell them what the play is and they they, they pull it off they execute it so all the times they had to go to the courses and, like and the trainings, <laughs> and the, you know this and that, and you know I gave them them hugs before they went. You know Love your mom, yeah, and they and they pulled it off for me. So you know, fortunate for me, that's why I'm able to have my hands on so many things is because they take the stress off me. I let them know the play and the idea, and they execute it. Let, let me ask you a question about Nepot. So earn your leisure is a we have a whole platform of business. Yeah, yeah. And um, a lot of people say don't work with family, but we only work with family. Everybody that's employed is the people that we grew up with, our friends, or actual like family, and it's worked out for us. You you spoke about that very eloquently before, where you said like. You don't have to give your mom money. You don't have to give your sister money. No. And you don't want it like that. You you put them in a position and now they actually are running businesses and they have income coming in. So now not only do they, they have something to do, because like you give somebody money but they just bored at home all day. Like they actually running a business, but then also they're stimulating your economy, you stimulating their economy, and you was like, if you're giving people money, it's only so long before you get jammed up. Man, I'm a firm believer that if somebody don't want it themselves, regardless of how much you give them, they ain't gonna have shit, no way. I'm fortunate. My mother's a self-made millionaire. My sister, she, she has a car lot, she does a bunch of other shit. She's a millionaire herself. You understand? So, if you're dealing with somebody that you can't trust, you just got to take it for what it is. You know, I'm blessed. I could trust my family. I could trust my sister. I trust my mother. And that's what the play is. And they know that's how it is. We like the mob like that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's, that's just how it go. And I believe you got to have some type of understanding with somebody to really excel like that. You got to have somebody you could call into your office and really have those real genuine talks with to take this shit over because a lot of times being an entrepreneur and a boss, you're going to hit some potholes and some stumbles that's going to test everything y'all ever did, test everything y'all ever built, anything y'all ever dreamed of, and you got to be prepared for that. Yeah, equally as impressive as the wing stop and is uh, your venture into the spirits industry. And so I'm interested to find how'd you enter into this Bel Air Rose because this is like one of our favorite champagnes. You sent, right, you right. sent the care package and uh, we're going to need another one very soon. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, how, how was that process and who walked you through it? And, and Talk about that a little bit. Well, for me, for me in the Bel Air Rose situation, it was real genuine. I was actually introduced to Bel Air by DJ Clue. New York ah, City finest. Cool. Cool, 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 yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. Cool. We had a party one night in New York City, and uh, I want to say it was Greenhouse or something. Had Greenhouse. Oh, yeah. 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 Greenhouse. Yeah. Yeah. You walk into like a forest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she had trees and leaves on the roof and shit. I was like, yo, I was in the zone. You know what I'm saying? And I had some Bel Air that night. I never forget it. And the following morning, I called him and asked him, like, yo, what's up with that? I need some more of that. You know what I mean? And, and it was just a genuine vibe. He was like, yo, they just building their thing. I'll give me the contact. Let me let them know. I love it. I don't even want nothing. I just want to let them know this is what it is. And this is what I want to let a lot of people know that a lot of times to, to actually build on whatever it is you do, 
you got to really, really just strategize and do it out of love. It's a lot of people that come to my DMs. Rose, would you do this for me? <laughs> now, I ain't even mad at you. That's cool. But a lot of times for me to separate you from any of the other motherfuckers that I feel don't have a vision, guess what the first thing I'm looking for? Okay. If I was doing this, you know what I would have did first? I would have posted one of Rick Ross albums first. Uh, then I would have DM Rick Ross. Rose, you don't say. This is what I want you to do. Because guess what I'm going to do? It let me know you got a vision. I'm going to fuck with you. This is what I've done with brands time and time again. I did it with Bel Air, just out of love, genuinely supported Bel Air. I did it in the last few months on my story with Rap Snacks and James Lindsay. Mm -hmm. I got on the fucking Instagram and just said, yo, I just had some of these Rap Snacks. They taste good as hell. I want my face on the bag. I can't play basketball. I can't play baseball, but I want to be on the bag. And guess what? I showed love for maybe 90 days in a row. And I sat down and we had a, a business meeting and we closed the deal. One time for Rap Snacks yes. and James yes. Lindsay. Shout out to James. Shout out to Wise Intelligent, the whole team. So all I'm just telling you is let's be strategic at whatever it is you're doing. Before you reach out to somebody, do something in their favor. Bring something to the table. That's what you got to do to be respected as a boss. And that's what I did. I wanted to get to know how the spirits work. I'm Ricky Rose. Exactly. You understand? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm not looking for a job, but what I want to do is look for knowledge. So I met the CEO, Brett, and in exchange for the knowledge he shared with me, let me sit in on the a, on a business meetings, on the calls, on the this and that. Yo, I'm going to show us some love. I enjoy it. And guess what? In the future, I know anything I want to know to be able to do anything I want to do. But right now, it's just out of love. Genuine. Yeah, we, we got a text that we officially bail their boys. Shout out. Away. Shout out to Lex. <laughs> Lex at. Shout out to Lex. You, you, you strike me as an extremely humble person and also a knowledge, a sponge of knowledge. Uh, Diddy, I believe you, you assigned to his management company. I know you right. learned a lot from Diddy. You spoke about the president, um, the right. head of, of Bel Air. Mm -hmm. How important, speak to these people, how important is it to just, a lot of times you feel like you're already Rick Ross, you're a boss, like, you know what I'm saying? But how important is it to just understand that there's always something else to learn and you can always learn from somebody? Okay, first and foremost, you got to ask yourself, first and foremost, how much do you want to know? How much do you want to learn? And be straight up and down with yourself. I'm the biggest boss as far as I'm concerned, Ricky Rose, but I'm still a student of the game. I still want to learn something right now. Straight up and down. And when I'm around the big homies who got something to share with me, or regardless, it could be somebody that's sweeping the floor in the background. If you got something to share with me, Rose want to hear it. Mm. I want it. Yeah. I could never have too much of that. And so once again, that's the passion. Be strategic. Bring something to the table. If you're a boss, if you're an executive, go out your way. Make that phone call later today. Call somebody that you know you ain't call usually. Thank them for whatever they did. Have them go to that next level. Reward them. Yeah, one of the best pieces of, of business advice, and I want you again to speak to, to the over 1,200 people that are here. You said knowing what not to do is as equally as important as knowing what to do. Right. And so in business, what are some things that you've learned or you've experienced over your career of not to do? Well, me being a boss, one of the first things I know not to do is I don't slander one of my teammates with the rest of the team. We not going to huddle up and no, nah, if it's a problem, we'll discuss that and then we're going to bring it to the table and address it in an honorable way. Even if a motherfucker may not like the results, we're going to do it in an honorable way. So once again, yeah. So once again, my teammates that's with me, the dudes that's sacrificing not only their time, their life, whatever it is we're doing, they know they're doing it for a genuine cause. And like I say, the same person you have next to you that may only goddamn help you reach 50% of your goals under my direction may help me reach 100%. Now, what can we do to change that? What we got to do is make sure we learn and understand how to bring the best 
out of everybody that's around us. Have you ever thought about like audio? Like you, like you, like when you talk, it's like you're one of the great narrators. Yo. It's like what's the guy? He paint pictures. That, with no, words, what's, what's the black actor? The old, the um, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> You're like a Morgan Freeman. <laughs> like a Morgan Freeman. Shout out to Yo, Morgan Freeman. you're gifted, man. Nah, you really got a talent with that, man. Yeah, man. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be honest. I spoke with somebody about that before, but I told him right now I'm not interested. You know what I'm saying? I just want to continue to connect with the young entrepreneurs who hit me through my social media platform and that's basically the only ones I talked to. I wasn't doing this before the pandemic, but I understood once the pandemic, the game changed. We got to communicate differently now. The shit, I, walk, I wake up walking barefoot in the morning and shit, having barefoot <laughs> chronicles. I've been watching, I've been watching. <laughs> I, want, well, I want to ask you, so you had one of the most legendary business moves in the last couple of years with Coming to America 2. Obviously, everybody knows was filmed at your house, but yeah, that's, that's a fact. Prince is a moonda. But you actually, you actually caught a bag off of that, right? Right, right, right. Can you talk about that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't definitely. just for show, like... What you mean? Like you, you told the, like I'm saying, like people would have been like, a lot of people would have just been like, yo, this is my oh, house. Oh, you can use my house just yeah. for the just for the look. Hell of it. no. Yeah. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> that ain't why we hustling. That ain't why we grinding. This is a, this is a business, and you gotta execute your business. So what you gotta realize is, you know, I'm from Miami. I love being in Miami, and I love Atlanta. It's a lot of big business going on in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I believe there's more films in production in Atlanta than it is in Cali because of the tax breaks, etc. That's going on in Georgia. And so you gotta understand when when somebody like coming to America too, Eddie Murphy and Paramount Films is putting together these films. These are hundred million dollar budgets, and when they decide for your state to be you know, the location for 40% of the film, you got to understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, right off the rip, man, I got to say salute to Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We did some good business and, and, and that's what it's about. And um, I did that with a lot of my automobiles. It's a lot of things going on and shit. Rose want the paper. Rose want the money. If it's about getting money, let's do it in an honorable fashion and let's get it on. And, and we can't, we're not going to pretend like you weren't in the movie. We, we definitely got you in the movie. And I, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I recall yeah. you acting in it. That's the, that's the negotiator. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't pressure nobody to give me a little cameo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just let them know I, I could work my accent being around my Haitian <laughs> homies. Is that, is King that? Akeem has returned. <laughs> is acting something you want to keep pursuing? I, 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 I remember you in a few series. Um, so is that something that down the line, as we grow businesses, is acting something you want to continue to pursue? You know, I feel like, you know, the last few conversations I've been having with a few homies, I think, you know, you never know. You know what I'm saying? You never know. You never know. You know. Am I going to really go and audition? Rose may miss the audition. <laughs> <laughs> miss the audition. Mom can't sit in But if y'all work something out with me, I may make that happen. Yeah. I, I, I want to talk about a business venture that you said um, you didn't do. You said the cigarette smoking. Um, but I know cookies is something that you invested in. And so cookies right. is coming to Miami. Cookies so, is coming to Miami. So you're right. invested in that? Cause that Shout out to Bernie. Yeah. Can you talk about that? Because we... we I've, I know some people who have been to the store in Cali, yeah. and it's incredible. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> so can you talk about what's coming to Miami? Cookies, cookies is is the number one man. It's the number one strand when it comes to cannabis. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know I'm. You know I love to smoke. I love to do what I do. It's also, you know, uh, you know, it also helps me with my seizure situation. So y'all could make sure y'all put that in there too. He do it for medicine, <laughs> <laughs> medicinal purposes only. You know what I'm saying? But uh, what I did was I created a partnership with Burner. We sat down. I created Collins Ave. You know what I'm saying? Cannabis. And we created a partnership. We launched uh, early last year. It was a huge success. Pink Rosé, Lemon Pepper, you know, uh, the other strands. We sell out, you know, first few minutes in the stores. And uh, the end of this year, it's going to be another few strands going on. But once again, that's something that I love. Spirits cannabis these are all multi-billion dollar industries that i love why would i keep myself from getting money with the shit i love 
So make sure this is what you do. When you sit down and you at home, you look at everything that's going on around you that's getting money and you find a way to put yourself in the middle of it. But be a plus. Let me ask you this, if we can. Uh, a lot of times we, sp- we speak to like entertainers and athletes and people always ask them like, their favorite highlights of their career, like LeBron dunking over Terry. <laughs> Jason Terry? Shout out to Jason Terry. Jesus. <laughs> oh, but I want I want I want to ask you, I want to ask you what's your favorite highlight in business? What's the thing that you're most proud of? You like you like damn I, I really finesse that situation crazy. Like what's your favorite business highlight for your career? Man, I got a few. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I got a few. I can't I can't you know I'm thankful. You know what I'm saying? That, that's one thing that you know they'll let you know. I'm grateful. Whatever it is, for my very first franchise, when we cracked 25, uh, as we continued to grow, you know, being a franchisee was something I never could, you know, fathom. That was the perfect word for that. (laughs) And, And, you know, here we are, you know, part of so many successful brands. Um, It could have been album number 10. You know, that's where everything drives from my music and my passion for the music that I make. Album number 10 most definitely was, a, you know, you in the club and, you know, that tear run down, you got to ease that motherfucker out of the corner <laughs> of that eye, you know what I'm saying? And it's just all the love you getting in the fans that's been there, you know, since 06. So, you know, maybe cracking that album number 10 may have been yeah. the one for Rosé. Can, can we go over sign for a few minutes? You got a couple minutes? I think they said they... Let's do it, brother. All right. Because um, well, he said album mode, so in my mind, I got, well, a, I got a few. Go ahead. You go. Yeah. You go. You go. Because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about music. Go ahead. Well, since we're on, I wanted to ask him a real estate question. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Real estate. So everybody knows you got a van, the Holyfields property, um, deeply discounted. And I believe you just bought another property in Miami from ball player. Would you get it? At Mari Stoudemire. Correct. But you're buying these properties. So like we teach real estate, it's like, you know, you get the stress properties, low market value, right? So how are you getting, because you're getting like mansions, but you're getting a deep discount. Everything you need to get, you need to get on a discount. And how are you evaluating that where it's like, all right, this is the time for me to get this $5 million crib for $3 million. You know <laughs> EYL University is the biggest online platform for education, but it's much, much more. It's actually a community. Our private Facebook group has over 8,000 members and 20 infinity groups. The students teach themselves just as much as the professors do. We have weekly webinars. We have over 100 past webinars. You get access to MG The Mortgage Guy's Real Estate Blueprint. You get access to monthly financial planning calls with yours truly. You get access to our monthly group chat investment calls and much, much more. So. Go to EYLUniversity.com right now and take advantage of our limited offer, blowout sale, 65% off of the annual membership. EYLUniversity.com right now. You know, really it's just, that's being prepared. As a boss, you could be prepared or you could be ill-prepared. Having capital keeps you in a position where you prepared when something presents itself Um, somebody in another situation you could capitalize on it that's what it's all about I'm in a position where some shit come across me five minutes later I'm at the real estate I'm at the, I'm at the property I'm meeting with the realtor the realtor don't know I know the owner I'm talking with the realtor she's a beautiful young lady she helping me out I'm looking at the house 10 minutes later I told her it's mine yeah yeah and she and she looking like what do you mean (laughs) (laughs) it's mine baby (laughs) (laughs) smoking like a boss (laughs) she say so uh if it's yours what bank is going to do you loan (laughs) <laughs> do you want it in the box baby it's mine thank you and that's straight up how it go keeping your capital it keep you in a position of power when something that's worth 10 million come up and it's, they selling it for 4 million, buy it. 
it's gonna be worth money. I've never lost money with real estate. I never have. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I believe that we got the hard stop, but <laughs> Drake, that album, is that album coming? Man, shout out to Drizzy Drake. Y'all make some noise for Drizzy Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Stepping on my kicks to get you fucked up. <laughs> yeah, man. Big time, big time. Big time. Big time. One time for Drizzy Drake, uh, me and my brother, we most definitely had a conversation discussing us, you know, putting a project together and, you know, the way we would do it. And, you know, of course, it's nothing in concrete. But we had to speak on it because that's something that's been in the air yeah. for many years now with YOLO, etc. And, you know, the way we vibe, the way we connect, it's always been, you know, just some smooth player shit. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. And I always liked it, that line right there. <laughs> yeah. I had to tell that to my yeah. man. He always trying to step on my new sneakers. I said, nah, nah. Yeah. listen we, to Ross. We appreciate you, bro. Wish you had more time, man. But first of all, I want to say thank you because you might not even have realized that you really was one of the major inspirations for this financial literacy movement. You, Dame Dash, Jay-Z, a couple of other people, like, watching your moves. You know what I'm saying? Like, us as hip-hop fans, like, we didn't have talent to rap, but we watched your business moves, and we got a lot of inspiration and motivation from the things that you was doing outside of the world of entertainment. So, first and foremost, thank you for that. Thank like, you. I said, thank I'm not you. even thank sure if you can realize Yes, sir. That. Yes, sir. That's yes, sir. That's major. That's major, man. For everybody that's here today, I just want you to know when you when you speaking with your business partners, your colleagues, when you speaking on your dreams, make sure the look that's in your eyes are different from when you talking about anything else. Make sure the look that's in your eyes when you talking about your fucking dreams is different from any other time you talking about any of that other shit. Man, thank you all for having me, Rose. Rose! Rose! I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, can we just, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a pick backwards. My graduates from my school being Forbes, backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> A mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs>